Does masking in Lightroom frustrate you with bad results or make it hard to pull off the mask ideas you want? In this video, I'm going to share seven masking tricks used by professionals to bring depth, drama, and focus to your images. The same masking ideas I use on my own wildlife work every day. Some of these are straightforward, while others will completely change the way you think about masking in Lightroom. So stick around to the end. Let's start with the first one, a mask I use when shooting into the light to create something both creative and eye-catching. Often when shooting directly into the light, your lens often catches a lot of sun flare. And in this example with this rhino, the rhino is actually blocking the sun, but I really like the flare effect that the sun gives when shooting directly into the light. But you can create that using a simple radial gradient. I'm going to zoom out to 6%. I want to throw a radial gradient on the image, but quite far away from the edge. And it's bleeding into the image here from the top left-hand corner. That's roughly where the sun is sitting. Let's just change this mask overlay mode here so you can see what's happening so everything in red is going to be affected by this sun flare so to simply create the sun flare i'm going to increase the exposure increase the white balance and then also add some negative dehaze so what that's essentially going to do it's going to create that effect that roughly resembles pointing your lens directly into the sunlight so as you can see there, there's a nice warm glow on the image. So play around with the position of the flare and make sure the color of the flare matches the color in the landscape. If you had flare that is a slightly different color like this, for example, it doesn't truly match what the light was actually doing. So in this case, I would roll back the tint on the white balance there and then just play around with the warmth just to match the color of the light relative to the landscape. The second tip has to do with vignetting. Now, generally speaking, when people add a vignette, they add it to the entire image. So on each side, like that. Now, this is obviously an extreme example, but I'm just using this to demonstrate what I mean. So I don't like to vignette like that. I sometimes use a radial gradient to create the effect because then I can position the vignette where I want, like so. But what I'm finding is even that is not good enough. What I like to do is create a selective vignette. So I do that through masks. So what I do, I'm going to place a radial gradient on the bottom, I'm going to selectively darken just that. Now the purpose of a vignette is to direct the viewer's attention to the subject. And in this example here, I'm not going to add any darkening to the top because I've added that light effect there. What I might do is just use a radial gradient here on the side, just to selectively darken that in a subtle way perhaps like that and then I might just darken the left hand side slightly over there. So that is creating a selective vignette using two or three different masks placed strategically over the image. If these masking tips are opening your eyes to what's possible, imagine using a proven editing system to create wildlife images full of depth, drama, and emotion. That's exactly what I teach inside the Wildlife Edit, my Lightroom course for wildlife photographers designed to help you create images you'll be proud to share. I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out. Trick number three is a very simple one, but it's a trick I don't see a lot of people using, and I call this my clarity brush. So I'm going to create a brush. I'm going to add some clarity to the brush here. I'm just going to add an extreme amount of clarity. I might also just increase the highlights. And what I want to do is I want to increase the detail or the clarity in certain parts of the subject. So in this example, I'm going to zoom into 50%. I want to bring up the details in the image here. Perhaps that's a bit too close. Let's go back to 33 what I'm going to do with my brush here is I'm going to paint on the areas selectively where I want that clarity to fall. Now, often people will just select the subject, add clarity to the entire subject. But using this clarity brush, I'm able to paint in exactly where I want the clarity to fall, just allowing me to fine tune the details and draw attention to exactly where I want the viewer to look. Now that perhaps is a bit strong, so you could either roll back the amount of that brush there. You could also just, in this example, I might just drop the highlights a bit. I think that increased the highlights a bit too much. And you can also then play with any other slider you want. So you could add contrast to that area. You could decrease the blacks to bring in some more contrast. It really does allow you full customization for exactly where you paint that brush. Now for this next example, I'm going to create quite a dramatic effect to the sky. 
using a radial gradient to demonstrate what you can do with masks. And not a lot of photographers know that you can actually do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a radial gradient and I'm going to drop the exposure because I want to create a very dark area behind the bird. Now, obviously this doesn't look great. So I'm just using this to demonstrate what you can do with masks. I'm going to subtract my select subject and I don't want to darken the subject. Now, the problem is if you don't create a perfect subject selection, you'll see underneath the bird's beak, there's an area that hasn't been selected. There's also areas under here which haven't been selected. So you could think, okay, well, let's just add that area to the darkening just using a brush. The problem is, because we've created that radial gradient, the effect has been feathered from the center, and when you paint with a brush, it's applying the effect at 100%. So my advice is always, if you are going to include a subject selection in an effect, rather start with that subject selection, and I'll show you why. Let's just delete this mask. Let's create a subject selection. Now I'm not going to clean up the selection. Let's invert that because now we are going to select the background. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to intersect that background selection with a radial gradient, like so, and let's apply that darkening effect. So now I want to go do the same thing. I want to paint in those areas to include that in the background selection. So I will add a brush. I'm going to paint that in. Now you'll see that effect has been applied 100% exactly where I paint, but not a lot of people know this, you can actually move this brush layer below the radial gradient. You simply click and drag, and now that brush will still fall under the guidance of that feathered radial gradient there. So let me just move that brush back up. You can see it's now being applied 100%, but just by dragging that brush down, you're able to fine tune that mask, but still allow that brush to fall under the guidance of that radial gradient. So the effect would be 100% in the middle and gradually falling out to 0% as the effect decreases to the edge. Now the fifth trick is, before you do any editing, is I highly recommend creating a proper subject selection. So what I do, create a selection, I'm going to go in and fine tune that before I add any effect. So I'm going to subtract a brush, I'm just going to clean up these areas here, what you can do is you can change the overlay to white and black because then you're able to see exactly where the problem areas are. You can see what is part of your subject and you can see what part of your background is. So in this example here, there's a big problem here. So let's just switch that back to color overlay. I'm going to just clean that up. Now I would go around this entire image and make sure my subject selection is great. So what I would then do is once I'm happy with my subject selection, I'm going to create a subject template. So I'm going to call this subject template. And now what I do is I don't add any effects to that. That is my subject template to use for anything down the line. So what I can just simply do here is if I want to make that effect with the background again, I'm going to duplicate my subject template because now I know my subject has been selected perfectly. Then I will invert that. I can then intersect that with a radial gradient. And then I can apply my darkening effect. And I know then there's no errors around the subject. Trick number six, when it comes to sharpening an image, you generally will go down to your detail panel here. You'll add sharpening, change the radius, change the detail, and then add some masking. But sometimes you don't want to, in this example, let's say we don't want to sharpen the grass on the left-hand side. We only want to sharpen the leopard. Now, unfortunately, with the detail panel, we can't actually get rid of the sharpening in areas manually. I would love to see a paintbrush applied to this so I can get rid of the sharpening on that grass and paint that black. But in this example, I'll add no sharpening there. What I'll do is I'll create a subject selection and simply go down to detail and add sharpness here. Let's just zoom in. Now, you don't have as much control over the sharpening as you do in the detail panel, but it's definitely worth adding a small bump in sharpness using the mask to exactly the areas that you want. Now, this seventh trick is one of my favorites. What I want to do is I want to accentuate the light on the leopard and accentuate the shadows on the leopard. I'm just going to crop this in just to bring more focus to the leopard there. So what I will do is I'm going to start with accentuating the light on the right-hand side of the leopard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my masking. I'm going to select a color range. I'm going to select the color of the light on the leopard here. So that is roughly what I'm selecting here. I want to increase the appearance of that light. Then I'm going to subtract 
luminance range i'm just going to subtract the dark areas from this i don't want to brighten the dark areas which has that color there and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use a brush to subtract the mask in any areas that i don't want so like in this foreground here just painting that away like so and then what i can do is i can increase the white balance can increase the exposure and just change up the color as you see fit you can use this hue adjustment to change the color of the light you can also increase saturation decrease saturation you can also throw in color using this color tool here to really fine tune the light in there i'm just going to leave it like this for now just so you can see a very extreme result of what you can achieve now the inverse of this is i want to select the darks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new mask choose luminance range I'm going to include the shadows in this. I'll fine tune that to make sure I'm selecting all the darks. I don't want to select the darks anywhere else except the subject. So I'm going to intersect this with select subject. And I can see that's now chosen most of the darks for me. I think let's just go back to this luminance range and just select a little bit more. So now because the light is falling from the right hand side, I only really want to darken the left hand side of this animal. So I'm going to subtract a radial gradient. Just going to throw a radial gradient over the left hand side of this animal. Let's just decrease the feather, increase the size. So as you can see there, we're only trying to affect the shadow areas of this image. So and then I can drop the exposure and drop the white balance. And that is going to offset that effect of brightening up the light on the right hand side nicely with now darkening and adding a little bit of a blue tint to that left hand side of the leopard. Masking is just one piece of the Lightroom editing puzzle. To really get the most out of it, watch this video next for 20 more quick tips.